Oh god, I need a shot of tequila before looking at something like this. Um, so this is a view of uh, female um, anatomy that uh, you may be familiar with this view. It might be the only view you're familiar with, or maybe you've never seen it from this view. I don't know. You can figure all that out. So um, we see the mons pubis. Uh, again, that's uh, external to the uh, pubic bone. Um, and then the clitoris. The clitoris is uh, actually, um, clitoris is, is like an iceberg in many ways. Uh, you know how an iceberg you see just a little bit above the water and most of it is below? You only see a little bit of the clitoris. That's actually really just the glands of the clitoris. Most of the clitoris is underneath um, the rest of that tissue. So um, clitoris, you know, what, what guys never seem to be able to find. Um, but it's covered just as uh, the glands of the penis is covered by a prepus, so is the glands of the clitoris. Um, the prepus, sometimes you'll hear women who get a, uh, a piercing, they normally don't pierce the clitoris itself because that will send people about three feet straight up in the air. That's got a lot of nerve endings there. The prepus is uh, just a, a flap of skin. That's normally where the piercings take place, although I don't know about 100% of them. Um, we can see there the external urethral orifice, the vaginal orifice, and then the anus. So again, three openings for the female. Uh, external urethral or orifice is sort of the northernmost, and the anus is southernmost. Um, from, from, yeah, well, that's not technically correct, but you get what I mean. The hymen is a membrane that covers the vaginal orifice. Okay, so normally that should be there at birth. Uh, back in the old days, they used to say that, you know, a, a broken hymen was a sign that a woman had had sex, and that's nonsense. Um, you know, riding bicycles, doing jumping jacks, lots of things will cause that to rupture. But it is possible that women can get to through their life up until their first sexual experience without the hymen breaking, in which case it can be painful. Sometimes uh, they'll, you can go to the doctor and they'll, they'll cut it open for you. It's not a big deal. Um, again, two sets of labia, the labia majora and the labia minora. We can just use English. Labia major, labia minor. Two sets of labia. Labia again means lips, okay? so. Singular is actually labium minus and labium magus. I'm not going to be a stickler on that because um, they always occur in pairs. So um, we saw a lot of the male glands. Let's look at some of the female glands that are involved in all of this. So notice there you can see the um, crus of the um, clitoris. You can see the clitoris is actually a, a large organ, uh, most of which you know, is underneath the skin, like I said, like an iceberg. Only the, really only the prepus is visible above the skin. Now, notice that um, underneath the labia, so number seven there, underneath the labia are what are called vestibular bulbs. These are erectile tissue, just like the corpus spongiosum and corpus cavernosum on the males. Um, during sexual arousal, the labia become engorged with blood and they will puff up. Look next time, you'll see, it's, it's really obvious. So then right alongside the urethra is the paraurethral gland. They secrete lubricating fluid. Likewise, um, there are the um, uh, number 11 there, the greater vestibular glands. So the vestibule, by the way, is the space in between the labia. So the whole opening, remember, we've seen vestibule so many times, it basically means an, an open space. So in between the labia is the vestibule. And then we have glands. Notice there's the vaginal orifice, and we essentially have lubricating glands on the north side. Those are the paraurethral glands. And lubricating glands on the south side. Those are the greater vestibular glands. Once again, lubrication is essential to make all of that work. So the male had the bulbourethral to coat the glands of the penis. Hopefully the female then has lubrication coming from both of those and that should make penetration a little easier. And there are the two things that rule the world in one picture. All right. Uh, let's take a look here at the female breast um, and the underlying structures. The breast is just an accessory structure. It's mostly just a big blob of adipose tissue. It's hard to believe males get so excited about it, isn't it? So inside we have the mammary gland. 
Mammary glands basically atrophy uh, in between pregnancies. They, it's during pregnancy that they, that they become active and they start producing milk under the influence of prolactin, which promotes the production of milk. So coming from the mammary glands, um, you have the lactiferous ducts that bring milk up to, uh, through the nipple. Um, the nipple, by the way, is not like the nipple on a baby bottle. There's not just one opening. There are numerous openings, something like ten, a dozen of them, something on that order. Uh, I've seen that because I'm married and I had kids, and you can see a couple little bubbles of milk coming up through the nipple. So the areola is the dark area around the nipple. Um, so again, I think that's about it. The mammary glands, the lactiferous ducts, the nipple, the areola, and the breast is the accessory structure, mostly just adipose tissue. And have you ever wondered what happens to breast implants as women age? There you have it, right there. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's what they look like. So a former student of mine, um, those, are, those are not real. Um, I, as I told her, you know, when you're 50, you're going to uh, have trouble walking across the floor without stepping on those. So... Here we have again some more female anatomy. A lot of structures in this illustration. Let me put all the words up here and then talk through them in my typical haphazard order. Um, so look at the uterus there. We've got the fundus, the dome-shaped region on the top, and then the body. Then the cervix. The cervix is the neck of the uterus. Notice there is the cervical canal which opens internally, the internal os opens into the uterine cavity, the external os of the cervical canal opens into the vagina, into really the vaginal cavity, the vagina again being the entire organ. You can see the rugi there of the vagina. Then let's take a look at the uterine or fallopian tube. So again, the portion right next to the uterus is called the isthmus. Then we have the ampulla, then comes the infundibulum, and then the fimbriae, the little fingers, the little feathers, the catcher's mitt. Um, then there's the ovary. The ovary releases the egg, and you hope that the catcher's mitt, the fimbriae, catches it. You can see then the ovarian ligament holding the ovary to the uterus. Um, and then in between the ovarian ligament and the uterine tube is the mesovarium. This is all connective tissue, and the idea is to hold everything in place. When the ovary releases that egg, you don't want an, an ectopic pregnancy. You don't want it going anywhere. You want the catcher's mitt to catch it. So that's why you have various structures holding everything in place. You can also see in this picture the round ligament there heading anteriorly, and the uterosacral ligament heading out posteriorly. Um, the three tissue layers of the uterus. Outermost is the parametrium, goes around the outside. The mesometrium, the muscular tissue to squeeze the little parasite out. And then the endometrium, which is the innermost layer. Sometimes the endometrium can escape and it ends up all out through the pelvic cavity. That's endometriosis. Sometimes that's troublesome, sometimes it's not. Just depends. Um, they basically can go in with a little vacuum cleaner and try to vacuum it all out. So I think we've talked about everything here on this slide. Um, so let's move on. Here again, um, just a zoomed in picture of a couple structures. Um, you can see the uterine tube there, right? the fallopian tube. You can see the ovary. Again, in between is the mesovarium. I don't have mesosalpinx on your um, practical list because none of the charts or models in the classroom showed it very well. So mesovarium is all you have to know. It's the little strip in between the uterine tube and the ovary. That's pretty easy. So now looking at the egg itself, the ovum, um, there's a maturation process that goes on. Remember follicle, I told you to remember. Think, when you see follicle, think sperm for male, egg for female. So the primordial follicle is the follicle that's in the least stage of development, all right? Then as it starts to mature, it becomes the primary follicle. 
what's going on here is there are a bunch of nutrients that are now surrounding it because it, it, it needs nutrition, all right? It has to grow, it has to develop. So um, surrounding it, the follicle then consists of all the, the layers of nutrients that will, that will provide nutrition to the egg. Eventually, at some point, when the follicle becomes the mature follicle, you have the antrum, which is that space in there with fluid. And then finally comes ovulation, when you have the, um, the, ovula the uh, ovum um, being ejected from the follicle. All right, so uh, again, prim primordial, primary, mature. I think that's good enough for what we need. There is secondary as well, but I don't I don't have you deal with that. So they're easy to tell apart. Primordial has no big blob of nutrients surrounding it. Primary does. And then the mature has the antrum. It's ready to ovulate. Okay. And then what's going to happen here is the follicle after ovulation is going to turn into a temporary endocrine organ called the corpus luteum. Corpus body, luteum yellow, literally the yellow body. It will be secreting female hormones um, to help the development of the, uh, of the implanted ovum, all right? And so here we see um, just the whole kind of progression there, all right? We see the, um, the primary follicle, the mature follicle, we see ovulation taking place, the corpus luteum, the yellow body, the temporary endocrine organ, and then it eventually um, ceases functioning, it involutes, and becomes then the corpus albicans. Alb meaning white, the white body, all right? So that means we're done, okay? And I think we've talked everything through here. And here, there you see the little parasite I'm thinking about the money it's going to borrow from you. Um, and I think that's it.